lecture, we're going to do a very brief review of the essentials of queuing systems for the purpose of um, studying simulation. This is part of a simulation modeling and analysis course. We find that a lot of the simulation models that we work with are uh, variations of queuing models. Welcome to the lecture. Here we have the structure of the basic queuing model. You see the in the diagram, uh, we've got the input source, the um, sending the customers into the queuing system. The customers may or may not have to wait in a queue, be delayed in queue before they can go into service and come out as, as hopefully happy served customers. The input source is the calling population, that, that where, the, where, the, the, where they come from, the, the source of the um, arrivals into the system. This population may be infinite, may be finite. Into arrival time is the time between successive arrivals. Uh, the, uh, if we say that arrivals come in randomly with a particular average at a, at a specific uh, constant average rate, uh, then basically we are describing a Poisson process and the, the average rate of the Poisson process is the, is the mean, lambda, and it's equal to the inverse of uh, the inter-arrival time. Um, the the uh, average rate is uh, in, is uh, is always the rate is always going to be the inverse of time and vice versa. And when you play around with the units, you'll see that that's so. We'll probably have an opportunity to do this with a problem later on. Um, the Q is usually often specified to have. A maximum, but often the maximum is infinite, and that's the simplest case uh, that we work with. The service discipline applies to the queue, and it's the order in which the uh, queue members are selected for service. So customers could be lined up, they could be sitting around randomly, they could be at home waiting to be called, uh, but the service discipline is going to determine who gets called first. Um, it'll be FIFO, first in, first out, that's the most usual. LIFO, last in, first out. Uh, random, uh, usually random applies when uh, the items, the entities in the queue uh, don't really have any issue with sitting around uh, forever, uh, not human beings then. Uh, and of course, um, priority, where someone might have a priority and gets pulled out of the queue to go into service uh, first. The um, service mechanism, you can have one or more service facilities. Uh, each facility can have one or more equal parallel service channels. These are the servers, uh, kind of like the number of tellers in a, in a bank. Um, the service time, every, um, every individual, every entity that's going to come into the system and going to service has some kind of a random uh, time that's drawn from a probability distribution assigned to it. Where do we see queuing systems in the real world? Well, as you can see here, everywhere. Um, in, in the commercial arena, uh, going from um, a one a one chair barber shop to a supermarket to a gas station to larger and more complex queuing models. In the transportation area, we have um, toll booths, we have shipping, we have uh, traffic lights, we've got um, the loading, unloading at, at a dock, um, a parking lot, uh, taxis, elevators, city bike, and in uh, business, of course, uh, we've got uh, the clerical pools, industrial service systems, maintenance, repair shops. Uh, social service systems, the judicial system, legislative, uh, healthcare. Uh, there's almost, you know, nothing that you can't model as a queuing system. Although there are other models that apply that might apply better to certain systems than than queuing systems, but it still is very, very, very broad application area. Some important terminology of queuing systems. Uh, first of all, the state of the system. 
is generally taken to mean the number of customers that are currently in the system. That's the state of the system. Um, queue length, of course, is the number of customers waiting for service, uh, which generally speaking is going to be the state of the system um, minus uh, the number of customers being served. Uh, S is the number of servers. Lambda, as we saw before, is the mean arrival rate for, for incoming customers. Uh, mu is the way we designate the mean service rate. Uh, so 1 over lambda is the expected inter-arrival time. 1 over mu is the expected service time. Um, rho uh, is the utilization factor. It's the fraction of time the servers are busy. And it can be yeah, designated as uh, lambda divided by s times mu. Or in a case of one server, just lambda divided by mu. When a, a queuing system is stable, if it runs 24-7 for a long enough time, uh, it goes into a, a steady state condition, uh, into a state of dynamic equilibrium. Uh, dynamic equilibrium basically means whenever we look at the system, it's going to look approximately the same, uh, even though it's dynamic, not static. Customers are coming in, customers are served, customers are leaving. And yet, there's always the same number in queue, the same number being served, the same number in the system. Um, it doesn't look any different if we take snapshots at different points in time, although, of course, it's different uh, entities, different customers that are there each time. Uh, the same, uh, the rate in is equal to rate out. Um, the uh, utilization factor, rho, uh, if it's if it's not less than one, remember the fraction you had before with a single server, it's uh, lambda over mu. Uh, if it's greater than one, the system is not stable. It has too many people coming in to, and not enough people going out. And so it won't reach um, this state of dynamic equilibrium. What you see here are the output measures um, from the system, the dependent variables, you might call them, from the queuing system. Uh, they're the metrics, they're the measures of effectiveness, MOEs, or measures of performance. Uh, we use these measures to indicate uh, the performance of a system. Uh, what are they? The expected number of customers in the system. Remember, these words expected mean we're talking about population means. We call that L. LQ is the expected number of customers in the queue. W is the expected waiting time in the system, and that's including service time, so it's not all a real wait in human language. Uh, WQ is the expected time in queue. As we know, there isn't just a single queuing model. How do we classify queuing models? We, we need to be able to discuss them and identify uh, what kind of system we're talking about. Well, we, have, we, call, we say we have a certain number of phases. Um, how many um, workstations, let's say, uh, how, many, uh, the, the, uh, how many times does a customer have to go into service? There may be different service facilities. They may be in order. They, there may be a choice. They may have to go through phases, all the phases, first to this one, then to that one, then to the third one. Um, how many channels are there? The channels are, are the uh, identical servers at a particular workstation. Uh, what's the queue discipline? What are the rules by which we determine which uh, entity waiting in line is going to be taken next? As we saw, we've got FIFO, LIFO, random, and priority. Um, and of course, uh, there's something called a preemptive priority, where you can interrupt service of some a lower priority, but not higher. Um, some other things that we might be talking about, and these are very important to simulation, um, balking, reneging, and jockeying. Uh, balking is where you come into a system and you look at it and you say, wow, I'm not going in. I'm going to go a different day. It's too, too big, too, too, um, uh, too much traffic. Reneging is where you do go in. Uh, it's busy. You wait in line for a certain amount of time, and then you turn around and say, no, no, I can't waste any more time here, and you walk out. 
Uh, jockeying is where you have multiple lines, let's say one in front of each server, and um, you go to one, you're not happy, you go to another, and you go back to the first one. Uh, so that sometimes the system allows it, sometimes the system doesn't allow it. Jockeying from uh, one line to another where each server has his or her own line. When we classify uh, queuing models, well, we call it the PMMSQ system. Um, the P stands for the number in the population. If it's infinite, we usually leave that off. Um, M and M are um, Markovian. Uh, the first one stands for Poisson arrivals. The second for exponential service. If other distributions are used instead, a different letter would be substituted. Uh, S is the number of servers. Q is the maximum Q size. If the Q is infinite, that can be left off. MM1 queuing model is the model that's governed by Poisson arrivals, exponential uh, service times, um, a single server, single phase, um, a FIFO service discipline, infinite Q size, infinite source, uh, to compute the expected um, measures of effectiveness for the MM1 queuing system, uh, the formulas are really quite simple. Uh, you, you may not think so until you see the next one. Um, you, these are the, the four basic um, measures of effectiveness uh, that we like to look at. And they all basically require variations of lambda and mu. Uh, so uh, it's really not that bad. Here's the MMSQ. It looks very much like the MM1Q you saw a little bit earlier. Uh, the only difference is that there are several servers, uh, any, a number greater than one, and a customer can be in service at each of the servers. The servers are identical, uh, and yet um, there's a single queue uh, with a single service uh, discipline. Compute the expected measures of performance for the MMSQ. Um, this th gets a little bit more hairy, as you can see. Um, we need to define PN, uh, the probability that there are N customers in the system, P0, the probability that there are no customers in the system, and then the formulas follow, as you can see. Um, we may have a spreadsheet on Blackboard. If you're in my course, uh, it'll be in the Blackboard course uh, that has formulas so that um, you can compute these probabilities automatically uh, and just check your work and you know make sure that the spreadsheets worked correctly. One of the more interesting things about uh, studying queuing systems uh, is that when we look at uh, the uh, expected measures of performance, uh, there are relationships among them. This has been very widely studied, um, and it's, it sometimes ends up uh, being fascinating, um, especially uh, when it comes to simulation. We want to be able to see the same relationships coming out of our simulation that uh, we would see in the real world. And you can see how L and W, the number in the in the system, um, the number in the um, uh, the the time in the system, LQ, the number in the Q, the WQ, the time in the Q. How all of these things are related to each other in a such in a very very simple way, uh, but it's a multiplicative model, not a linear model like we are often expected to use in our statistics courses. Um, I truly hope we're going to have a chance at the end of the course when we do experimental design in simulation to come back and work more with this in a simulation context. Um, I hope you enjoyed this very, very brief overview of queuing systems. Uh, it might have seemed to be a little bit off topic in the context of a course called Simulation Modeling and Analysis. But um, we have found that uh, much of the uh, work we do in simulation modeling and analysis uh, deals with queuing systems. And it's nice to have the, um, the systems, the methods, the 
uh, terminology, uh, the measures of performance, uh, to, to have a place where we can review them and come back to them when, when we need it. And that was the purpose of this lecture. Thank you for attending this lecture.